Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today I wanted to talk about the almighty calorie. Kind of like an evil word in the health and fitness industry, but, I mean, we do need this word to cer certainly sustain life, too. But today I wanted to basically come to you with some fun facts about it and how to use your calories wisely. So, first, uh, a calorie is basically just a unit of measurement of energy, just how we measure energy that we intake. So, um, obviously that energy comes from a few different sources, uh, like our proteins, our carbohydrates, and our fat. And also alcohol is considered a source of calories as well. So, um, each one of those, each gram of each of those what we call macronutrients is worth a certain amount of calories, and I'll get into that later. Um, so, another fun fact for you to know is that it takes 3,200 calories to burn one pound of fat. So if you didn't know that fact before today, let that sink in. 3,200 calories. So, like we know on the back of a nutrition label, uh, every person on average is supposed to get 2,000 calories of, of energy, 2,000 calories per day, um, it, you know, for your intake. That, that number really does vary a lot. Guys are supposed to get more than women, and the older you get, the fewer calories you're actually supposed to intake in order to sustain life, to carry, you know, carry yourself through the normal bodily functions throughout the day, <laughs> you know. It takes, it does take some calories to, uh, to sustain yourself. So you're burning calories all the time, every second, just small amounts. Uh, so what ends up happening is, without realizing it, we eat too many. That's how we gain weight, obviously. So, how do we beat that? That's, that's always the big answer. And, you know, after um, the coursework and after all the research and everything, it really actually just boils down to one thing. And, you know, I, I always thought there was something more to it. I always thought there was some, I don't know, magic way to tweak your macronutrients to, uh, to get yourself to, mur uh, to burn more. Just like keto did, but that's like a whole nother ball of wax that we'll get into at some point. But really, it all just goes boils down to burning more than you take in. And that's the, the thing that people struggle with the most, because uh, the American diet is conditioned to have us consume more than we, than we burn. So, so anyways, probably one of the most effective ways, unless you're extremely active and you have a very active job or lifestyle, is to actually track your calories. That is going to be the easiest way to know for sure that you are burning more than you're taking in. There's a lot more math that goes into it because obviously, like I just said, you have to take into account your your age, your gender, and um, and your activity and, and other things too. Uh, your height. Your height actually has something to do with it, which is why I struggle so much because I never made it to five feet tall. So my numbers are very, very low. Um, as a matter of fact, um, you know, give or take, depending on how much I weigh, because um, like I said, I'm, I'm working on making that even go lower now, is I have to consume 1,800 calories a day. That's it, so I'm less. Um, and then, of course, then in order to burn that 3,200 uh, calories, you, you know, you have to give yourself what they call a deficit, a calorie deficit. So... Suddenly, not only you know should I be eating less than 1,800 calories, I have to calculate some sort of deficit below that, and that's what somebody like me is supposed to eat. Fortunately, I think most of you are not going to be in such a, I don't want to say serious or maybe severe, but like, you know, most of you are taller than me. Um, you know, hopefully most of you, or at least some of you, do get some sort of energy. Sorry, I have a cat that's making some noise here. What are you doing? You're weird. Okay. <laughs> Maybe he'll jump on my lap and then he'll be cute. Um, it's Jenny, for those of you who know who my cats are. <laughs> Anyhow, so uh, so what I try to aim for is uh, about 600 calories of a deficit a day. Like, they say that you're not supposed to eat fewer than 1,200 calories a day, that that gets into the dangerous levels. So somebody like me, with my demographic information... That's about where I'm supposed to be in order to actually see myself lose a pound or two a week. Because they don't recommend you lose any more than that also. That gets to the unhealthy levels. Stop that. Oh, you have a spring toy. Oh my goodness. You... Here. Take this one. There. Okay. Cats. <laughs> Anyhow. So, uh, okay. So, back to my train of thought. Anyhow. 
So, you know, as you start to calculate all that in there, then it's like, wow, no wonder is it so difficult. And, you know, if it wasn't so difficult to lose the darn weight, we'd all be super fit, right? So, that's a little bit of a glimpse of um, the rough math needed to lose even one pound of body fat. Okay. So, let's talk a little bit about those macronutrients. Okay, so to review, macronutrients are the amount of fat, carbohydrates, protein, and alcohol that you consume, because all four of those things make up sources of calories. So, one of the biggest crazes in diets these days, like keto, you know, that I was just mentioning, is to reduce or eliminate the amount of carbohydrates. Okay, so, yeah, keto works. Keto works because it's not good for you. <laughs> like I said, a whole nother ball of wax. Okay. Um, keto causes you to basically starve yourself. Okay. Because of the way that macronutrients and lack thereof work, you are consuming less. You, um, you're eliminating um, hunger and you just don't really want to eat. So essentially, you can allow yourself to starve yourself. They say that you don't have to track when you're on keto, like track your calorie intake. And that's because there's probably no need because you're likely not eating enough anyways. So once you lose the initial water weight and then your weight loss slows down, yeah, you're losing weight, but it's because you're starving yourself. And then the issue with keto is once you stop, once you've gotten your goal weight, then you're putting it all back on. Been there, done that. I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> okay, so should that mean you should eat carbohydrates? Yes, it should. So, but the thing is, there's a couple of factors in there that you have to be aware of. So, some people cannot handle certain types of carbohydrates. Some people have allergic or intolerant responses. You know, like some people might actually be gluten sensitive or gluten intolerant. Yes, that is a thing. That should be diagnosed by your doctor. Certainly try it if you suspect you might be. How do you feel? Bring that knowledge to your doctor to know for sure. Okay. But do carbohydrates actually bring some good to you? Yes, they do actually, because some sources of carbohydrates are great sources of fiber and great sources of other micronutrients and vitamins that we need in order to be able to carry on in a healthy way. Also, please note that for every gram of carbohydrates that you consume, you are only taking in four calories. Okay, so I know it doesn't sound like much, but of course, obviously, if you eat something that's, you know, 20 carbs, Okay, well, that's going to equal 80 calories. It's not a whole lot, but let's compare it to some other things, like fat. Okay, so one gram of fat. Great, we consume fat in smaller amounts anyways, but still, one gram of fat is going to equal nine calories. That's over twice the amount. Okay, so yeah, watch out for those high-fat foods because, yeah, maybe they make you full, Maybe they increase your satiety, maybe they taste great, but if you eat too much, you are suddenly going to very quickly exceed the amount of calories that you're supposed to take in during a day, and maybe it's only lunchtime. <laughs> so, yeah, gotta be careful of that. Um, the third one, one that I want to address is protein. Uh, protein, I think, is probably my favorite uh, macronutrient, just because of all that it can do for you. First of all, one gram of protein is only equal to four calories, just like carbohydrates. Protein is also the, you know, the nutrient that's going to go into building and maintaining muscle. The other macronutrients don't do that. Uh, so, I mean, certainly that's important to, um, you know, to maintain strength, to maintain your ability, your mobility and ability to get around, of course. Um, and then, you know, as you build that muscle, it's going to take more grams of protein to maintain that muscle. So protein, what you intake from that is actually, you know, kind of being used in other ways that are essential for human life. That's pretty important. Uh, not to mention it's providing you with the amino acids in order to help other types of functions in your body too. So there's a lot to it. Um, it's maybe not micronutrient dense, but in some ways it is. So it may not have as many, but there are some. That's why you eat a balanced and varied diet to make sure you get them all somehow. Again, that's another topic for another day. I could probably talk about that one for about two hours. <laughs> but protein is, um, now there's certainly a point where you can have too much protein. Um, if you have any kind of kidney issues, you have to watch about how many or how much protein you consume in a day. You know, watch out for that macronutrient macronutrient percentage to be just a little bit lower. 
but not too low, because like I said, it's important. Um, so then the fourth mic uh, macronutrient is alcohol. So, okay, yeah, broadcasting here from Buffalo, we're a city of drinkers. <laughs> it's just kind of one of our little stereotypes. So this one's a tough one, you know. <laughs> okay, so some, uh, some things for you to know is that a gram of alcohol is going to equal seven calories. Ooh, that is right, 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 yes. Yes, okay, I want to make sure my numbers are right. I, I have a tough time remembering numbers sometimes. Okay, um, yeah, seven calories. So that's more than both protein and carbohydrates. So, okay, so no, maybe we're not consuming a lot of alcohol in volume, but like, you know, a few shots is gonna give you like already 200 calories. And that might be at the end of your day when you've probably already consumed enough kinda adds up really quickly. So, and that's just like two shots is approximately 200 calories. If it is a sweetened beverage, there's tons of sugar in there too, and that's a type of carbohydrate. Four calories on top of that. So, you know, that's why people that are like, oh, oh goodness, I've been, I've been drinking a lot. No wonder I've been packing on the pounds. Well, yeah, yeah, because you're, you know, you're dosing yourself with calories that aren't really going to be utilized by your body. Um, so, and they, actually that's true. So with alcohol calories, yeah, there's, it is not bringing you anything nutritionally to the table. It is just what they call empty calories that are just there to be there and then get eliminated. <laughs> it's not going to help you or give you any kind of nutritional value whatsoever. Okay. So, oh, and another interesting thing about alcoholic calories is that uh, they are the type of calorie that, are, that you ingest. So let's say, okay, let's give an example. Um, say you decide to go out after dinner or something like that. You're going to hang out with some people. And you have a drink that has two shots. One drink, okay? And let's say it's something really healthy where there's no additional sugar, okay? All right, so healthy drink, just having one drink, okay, not too bad. And then you have a snack on top of it, okay? Um, order mozzarella sticks or something like that with carbohydrates and fat put in there. And a little bit of protein because there's some with cheese, okay? All right, so you've now consumed four different types of macronutrients. Something for you to consider is the fact that your body will seek to eliminate the alcohol calories first. They take priority. This is because your body views them as a toxin and it's like, ooh, Oh, my, my human just poisoned herself again with alcohol, <laughs> so I must eliminate this first. All type of digestion then gets put on hold. So those mozzarella sticks that you just had also, yeah, they're going to be dis uh, digested later, which means that those calories that you just took in are going to be more likely to be stored as fat. Ah, it's like one thing after another for bad news. And... Hey, don't get me wrong. I, I like alcohol. I do. I'll drink pretty much anything. But like, you know, once I started learning about this, I was like, oh, shoot, this one glass of wine with dinner or one glass of wine after dinner, that's going to have to stop. And uh, I am proud to say that I've only had like three or four drinks in this last month. Because <laughs> just simply, I don't want to subject myself to, um, you know, counteracting any kind of dietary efforts I've made, you know, only to undo them, you know, at the end of the day with a drink. It's like, oh my gosh. That's tough. That's tough. So I've really severely limited myself, even though, like, yeah, I, I am a happy social drinker, but gosh, not so much often anymore. So some things to consider with that. Okay, so um, I want to answer a couple of questions you either had or may, may not have known you had. Uh, so what's the best way to keep track of all this? Hands down, my best way to encourage you to track what you're taking in is to use some sort of calorie counter. Okay, not a food journal. Food journals are just simply not specific enough. We don't, we have to have a good clear uh, view and picture of what we're actually taking in and the amounts. And that's going to be another video for another day because portion sizes and food amounts, oh my gosh, if you miscount something consistently, it's also going to counteract all of your efforts. Okay, so, um, Yes, so um, the four that I know about the most, right, four of them? Mm, let's go with three, actually. Uh, Fitbit has a really, really good food database, and, um, you know, if you wear a Fitbit, uh, obviously you know you have access to the app. The food tracking app is fast, and um, it's pretty comprehensive, 
and they have the ability for you to scan the barcode using your phone's camera so that you scan the, you know, the, the barcode and then as long as you know what your portion size is, it's so, so fast. And then it just integrates and all the math goes in and works together so that, you know, know what your calorie deficit is because it's tracking your activity. So Fitbit is by far my favorite because for me, it's the most comprehensive. Other food databases that are really good are my fitness pal and live strong. Uh, not the biking website, but like, um, you know, just, uh, I think, because one of them is .org, the other one's .com. I'm pretty sure it's .com. I haven't been on that one in a while, but it was, before I had a Fitbit, it initially was the one I was using. Their food database is good, too. My fitness pal is also good, um, and their food database, I think, see, and this changes all the time because, you know, obviously these databases are growing by the day. Uh, my fitness pals, uh, for a while, they had the best and most comprehensive food database, but I'm thinking the others probably have caught up by now. Um, my fitness pal also has the best database for activities. So, you know, say you have a, an a, a job that's sort of active, you might actually be able to look up, up what your occupation is by how many hours of, you know, actual active work you've done, and then you can put those numbers together to counteract that. Um, or, you know, let's say you went outside and played some sort of sport with your kids, you know, saying playing catch. Playing catch is likely in that database. And so are hundreds of other activities that are not just your basic sports or not just basically walking, okay? So if you did something active, likely it will be in there. Um, so if you don't have a Fitbit, I highly recommend my fitness pal creating a free account on there just to have access to all that information. It's super, super helpful. So definitely food tracking. Now, the other question I was going to answer was, so is tracking macronutrients important? Yes, it is because of the, uh, for the reasons that I told you about, about what their caloric value is and, um, you know, certainly having a little bit of insight of how much micronutrients, vitamins and minerals you're getting from these, these foods that are provided by these macronutrients. Whew, that was a big muffle. So, but the thing is, if you're tracking your food already, macronutrient breakdown, usually it looks like a pie graph, is going to be included in there too. So you don't have to really track them per se. The app will do that for you. So it's more, it's a little bit better to just keep your eye on it, to make sure it's kind of where you want it. And you may not have a good feel for where you want your macronutrients to be. That's going to take some, some analysis. That's something I can definitely help you with, too, if you become a client of mine. Um, because, you know, there's a lot of little customization types of things that we can go over together. Um, so, but, thinking balanced. Maybe a good place to start. If you don't have any other needs, I have my other cat jumping. Um, tail. <laughs> so, maybe a good place to start is to try to go for balanced macros. One of the first things you're going to see is that your fat macro slice is going to add fast. Your protein one, you're probably going to have to work at. And depending on what your diet is, carbohydrates... <laughs> Lily, <laughs> carbohydrates may or may not pile on quickly. Um, so, you know, just some things to, to consider about, you know, uh, how to track macronutrients. Yes, it's important, but it's because of other things that are also important. So, I hope this gives some insight as to how to kind of plan a little bit of your... Uh, of your dietary intake and the value of the calorie. All right, so any questions, let me know and I'll help you out as best I can. Thank you.